welcome to a new episode of Pocky for Thought. I'm really sorry about there being such a long wait period between this episode and the last episode. I am trying to become better at it. As you can probably tell, I'm still having a little issues with the lighting, but we'll work something out. Today's episode is going to be talking about episodes 8 through 12 of Lupin the Third, Part 1. As you may remember from last episode, or if you haven't watched uh, the last episode, you should go watch that before you uh, watch this one, just so you know what I've already said. From what I said la last episode about uh, Fujiko Mine's character, I had really not... It wasn't that I disliked Fujiko as a character, I just felt like she wasn't being written well. She, her character was very inconsistent, and her, she was just kind of saturated with sexism from a writing perspective. And the show itself does have a lot of sexism in it, but the anime did come out in 1971. Judging from the time period, it's kind of expected. I mean, there's still sexism today, so it's not like you can completely judge something just because it has cis overtones. And you can even like a character who falls into sexist stereotypes, but the problem with Fujiko is that they kept trying to fit her into two rather opposing stereotypes that they weren't molding together well, and it made the sexism that was in the show more frustrating because it seemed like the writers were letting their sexism affect how they were telling the story and affecting the characterization and affecting the plot and ugh. When you're letting something like sexism or racism or I don't really like this word because of how it misunderstands the word phobia but homophobia, biphobia, if you let that affect the story that you're trying to tell in such a way that the, your story suffers from it and not that it's there and that makes it bad but that it becomes bad because you're letting that get in the way of logical storytelling characterization and you're letting that affect how you're portraying a character's actions like you you make a character do something that previous that from everything that happened previously they would not do this but you make them do it anyway simply because that is what your expectation of that person is that's one just very unprofessional and bad storytelling and you're letting your prejudices on what you have made this character be get in the way of that character actually being themselves. And this is this whole concept is something that uh, particularly annoyed me with this week's uh, episode of Supernatural, Remember the Titans, but um, that's an entirely different subject entirely. It's not something that's solely in Loop on the Third, so it's not like I'm picking on Loop on the Third for this, but it's something that up until episode, the end of episode 7 had been a huge flaw in Fujiko's stories and it was inf infuriating and frustrating and it was really hard to really enjoy the stories when it felt like I didn't know who Fujiko was because the writers didn't know who she was but they wanted her to fit what they thought a woman was supposed to be and that's just not good storytelling and it was frustrating especially with the last episode of Loop on the Third Part 1 that I had watched and I had stopped watching it after the episode started going into uh, 1972 because the article that I was writing for the Golden Anniversary of Anime blogging project was covering 1991 so I didn't really want to expose myself to anything that came out in 1972 because I, I felt that those episodes would have been more 
uh, telling of what was going on in 72 rather than 71. So I stopped watching at about 11, episode 11, episode 12. And I think it was episode 12 where this uh, happened. The later in the anime that I went, the more consistent Fujiko's character became. And pretty much my favorite episode out of all the episodes I had watched was the very last one I watched, which I think was episode 12. Fu Fujiko? They found a balance in between the uh, romantic aspect of her characterization with her relationship with Lupin and how Lupin interacts with her and how she interacts with Lupin. They found a balance with that and the fact that she is a self-serving person who is really only out for herself but does kind of actually care about Lupin as a person or as a lover or whatever it is she thinks of Lupin. And I was very happy with that. I, the, the episode became my favorite out of every episode that I had watched. I felt like they had finally found who Fujiko was and that they were properly, properly depicting uh, her character. And it's actually really exciting to see someone finally understand their character. It, it was great. Um, however, uh, the sexism that is in Lupin the Third even affects the male character's uh, characterization, which uh, was actually pretty interesting to see. Um, in episode 9, when Fujiko is coming in to uh, help Lupin with... I I forget what it was. She was helping Lupin with something, and Jigen and Goemon didn't really expect her to help. And they both just walk out for no apparent reason, aside from the fact that she's a woman and they don't want to work with a woman, but they've worked with her before. And just in a previous episode, Goemon was, like, separating from the group with Fujiko and fighting alongside her. And their only reason for breaking up was breaking up with Lupin and disappearing on him is because Fujiko's a woman, but they've worked with her before. I know Jigen really doesn't like working with Fujiko, but he doesn't abandon Lupin because th he's working with Fujiko. It, that's not part of Jigen's character. Jigen is a very loyal companion, and I don't know why he uh, is traveling with Lupin or why traveling with Lupin is so important to him, but it is, and he wouldn't just up and leave him. And it was very out of character for Jigen, and Goemon has worked with Fujiko before, and actually, at first, liked Fujiko more. And they, sh Fujiko and Goemon have been kind of on and off, just as uh, Lupin has been on and off. Uh, like the first time we meet Goemon, uh, Fujiko is Goemon's girlfriend, and then in another episode, with when Fujiko's in disguise, uh, she's flirting with Goemon, and Goemon is very receptive to it, and uh, seems to enjoy it as well. And he kind of seems to be her friend, uh, or at least someone he doesn't mind spending time with, until this episode, where all of a sudden, oh, she's a woman, I can't work with her! It's so weird and out of character for both of them. If, if Fujiko had done something, like, betrayed them for the umpteenth time, but in a way that made it so that Jigen and Goemon would put their foot down about it, it would make more sense. But she hasn't. All she did was show up. And it doesn't make any sense. And, the ep and, and the, this episode is really the only episode where I felt like uh, Lupin actually really cared about other people in a non-selfish way, but Lupin's character wasn't really altered all that much. It was more the fact that everyone around Lupin's Lupin had their characterization altered to make Lupin look better, and that's not that's not good writing. That's not good characterization. That's it's just rather unprofessional, and it makes no sense, especially if you like Jigen, and you like Goemon, and you like Fujiko. All, the, all the, everything that's out of character and uncharacteristic of them that happens in these episodes to make 
Lupin look better? No. No. I mean, it is like a beginning episode, and then Lupin and the others then have several years of their franchise being rebooted and redone to, uh, like, make them less rough around the edges. But still, this is episode 9. You sh should have a grip of your characters, especially since, especially since there was a manga before it. I haven't read the manga, but there was a manga before the anime became the anime. And you would think that you would know who these characters were by this point. You've been writing the episodes, you've been animating them, you've probably read the manga so you know what it was you were animating. You've written the scripts, you've done, all, you should have done a lot of work on figuring out who these characters are and what would go into, what would logically happen in an episode with them in it. And I'm not saying that we can't suspend our disbelief. Because people can just suspend their disbelief. But suspending your disbelief only just, go, only goes so far. And you can't really expect us to suspend our disbelief when we have got to know these characters and we are expecting the good parts of them to come out in desperate situations or you expect them to continue to be the loyal friend that uh, they've been throughout the entire show so far and you don't expect them to suddenly go against that for no good reason you still have to have rules that you go by even when those rules aren't nearly as rigid as real life's rules are suspicious belief is basic they needs to be supported by an emotional attachment, attachment to the characters, attachment to the characterizations, logical characterizations. It ha you have to have a support that is the logic within the show. And everything beyond that can be suspended. But you still need a base. You still need support system. And this episode just decided to break the support, break the base, and it just wasn't a very good episode. And it's definitely my least favorite out of the ones that I saw, aside from episode 4, where Lupin reveals that he is the most prideful, egotistical jerk who would let an innocent man die in his place in order to make a point to Detective Zenigata. Lupin is just not a likable character for me. And I have a very hard time rationalizing his behavior. I like Jigen though. Jigen's definitely my favorite, with Goemon as a close second. And Fujiko's alright. I don't really like Fujiko, but part of that I blame on the writing and her characterization until the last episode that I had watched. I don't, I don't really like the show very much, so I probably won't watch any more of it. So this will probably be the last loop on the third episode uh, you'll get from me, uh, or at least anytime soon. All right, so. Next episode, we'll be talking about Marvelous Melmo, which also came out in 1971. Thanks for watching! Bye!